It's 50 degrees right outside of Philly, and it is nasty out. But a little bit of bad weather wasn't going to stop Cameron Davis and her grandmother from celebrating the 20-year-old's birthday. And so what are we doing to celebrate? I'm going to go. You're going to go. go. How do you feel? You feel excited? I'm ready to get it. I'm excited. Spending your birthday at a polling location may not seem like the coolest way to celebrate. But for millions of young people this year, voting is actually the hip thing to do. Look at me. I'm doing my civic duty. This election, something's in the air. From celebrities like Snoop Dogg. Your voter registration is now complete. To Tyler, the creator, admitting that this will be their first time voting. And a lot of y'all going to be like, eh, my vote doesn't matter. And they're going to pick who they want. Not to mention AOC gaming to get out the vote to the tune of nearly half a million viewers on Twitch. No, no, you, what got, you, you guys can call me AOC. Mike Pence okay. can't call me AOC. Even organizations, both grassroots and national, driving young people to the polls both literally and figuratively. Hosting COVID safe block parties and engaging in social media, public art, even streetwear. With more than 6 million young people already voting in this year's election, is this the year the youth vote finally shows up? Just voting. Either way, it's clear that now, more than ever, it's not cool to not care anymore. How important do you think the youth vote is in this year's election? Well, because the youth vote is usually so low, a lot of enthusiasm from young voters can make a really big difference. And I think the difference could be especially big in a couple of key swing states. Nightline traveled to three battleground states to look at how and why young people across the country are hoping to move the needle on November 3rd. Oh, bye, oh, bye. You did it, you did it. I know. Back in Pennsylvania, Cameron and her grandmother are teaching me a vote dance she made up to celebrate her ballot. For almost 20 years, Cameron's home state has gone to the Democrats until Trump flipped the state red in 2016. While 538's election forecast has Joe Biden favored at the moment, voters like Cameron, who have been concerned with the president's handling of the pandemic and racial justice, aren't taking their vote for granted. So you think there's a lot at stake here? There is a lot. I don't believe that we will progress as a country, as a nation, if we continue to go in the direction that we're going and with the president that we're going with. I have to add a caption because- For Cameron, the power of social media has made the act of voting that much more exciting. It's limited to do things in person right now. I wanted to try to get people's attention about voting, but make it fun. As long as it catches their attention, they're gonna listen to the message that's behind it. One, two, three. The influence of TikTok and Instagram on this year's election is something that organizations small and large are banking on to drive up registration numbers. Early voting's open in Atlanta, and at the Urban League's pull up to the polls event, it's part policy and part, well, party. 24-year-old community organizer Julius Thomas is just one of the many who helped put this together. This is an election of our lifetimes. Um, this is so important to get young people excited and energized to vote and find new and creative ways to just keep people engaged. His home state of Georgia is changing, and it's largely due to shifting demographics of Atlanta and its surrounding areas. The state has been solidly Republican for almost 25 years, but Hillary Clinton's performance in 2016 surprised everyone. Now, 538's got the Peach State as a true toss-up. So I think it's important to say for our forecast that it's not a crystal ball, but yeah, George is very close right now. After the passing of John Lewis and C.T. Vivian, this city does not want their work to go in vain. We want to show them that we're ready to carry the torch and that we're doing it in a cool, fun, and exciting hip way that only Atlanta can do. Julius is focused on getting first-time voters registered and to the polls. Like Marcus Neely Jr., at 25, he's voting in his first presidential election. I was too young uh, when Obama was in there his last term. Mm -hmm. Then the next term, I was kind of discouraged, so I, I didn't vote. So this is my first time voting. What's going through your mind as you're about to go vote for the first time? I'm not going to lie, I'm excited. In any given election, between 35 to 60 percent of eligible voters just don't vote. And young people are a big part of the problem. 
538's Amelia Thompson DeVoe has been studying what keeps people from the polls. So a lot of the people that we actually talked to may have been eligible in 2016, but for whatever reason, just decided not to vote. Now they're not only registering early, they're voting early. Why do you think that is? Sometimes it's a sense that politics just isn't worth it, that they don't think it matters, they didn't like the candidates. Sometimes it's kind of a mix of the two. And so I think what we're seeing this year is that people really think it's important to vote. For Marcus, it took the outcome of the 2016 race for him to wake up. After 2016, did you feel guilty for not having voted at all? Definitely, because it's people that, like, such as felons who can't vote or people that are not old enough that are very passionate about voting, and they can't vote, and, I'm, and I, got, I can vote, and I'm not voting. What does it mean to you to see your communities get activated, both being a person of color mm -hmm. and being a young person? It means a lot because it, it's setting a good example for the younger generation so we don't ever get discouraged again to not vote and feel like our vote doesn't count. Yo, you did it. I did. How'd it go? Uh, well, it went well. It was quick, easy. Cast my vote. Yeah, how you feel? You feel <laughs> good? Feels yeah. good? You got the sticker. 300 miles away, the race in the Tar Heel State is heating up. So we're driving through North Carolina right now, and political scientists are calling this the swingiest of swing states. I mean, on top of a presidential election, you have a Republican senator and a Democratic governor both fighting for re-election. This is the definition of a purple state in 2020. 24-year-old Republican and aspiring politician Catherine Whiteford is working hard to keep the president and her party in office. Hey there, I hope you consider voting for Representative John Hardister. We've done over half a million voter contacts this year alone um, to try to make sure that not only do we win the presidency, but also down ballot, because down ballot is also important. Three, two, one. Today, she's canvassing for her friend, 38-year-old state rep John Hardister, outside of the polls. What's the guy's plan here today? Um, just talking to the voters, trying to convince them to vote for him and the Republican ticket. Cautious optimism is the name of the game for Republicans in North Carolina. Trump took the state in 2016, but this time, 538 has Biden ahead, but just barely. I think in North Carolina and in states across the country, we're seeing people really concerned about the pandemic and about the economy, just the state of the world right now. And Trump has not gotten good marks on his handling of the pandemic in particular. It's a real weak spot for him. How do you think President Trump has handled the pandemic? I think that under the circumstances, they tried to handle it as best as they could. Um, we see that Biden is trying to propose a lot of what Trump has already been doing. You're a first generation Chinese American. Does it bother you, some of the rhetoric that's come across about the virus from the Republican Party and from President Trump, Kung flu, China virus. There have been an increase in attacks on people of Asian descent since coronavirus has kind of impacted this country. Does that bother you at all? I mean, I can't really speak to Chinese people being targeted per se, just because I haven't personally seen that. Um, but as far as like calling it the China virus, I mean, from all that we know currently, it probably did come from China and they didn't handle it well, and they were probably trying to suppress a lot of information. I think that it's fair to call it the China virus. I don't personally feel insulted by it. How about Kung flu? That I'm not as comfortable with, um, but I mean, the China virus is a fair statement. A week before election day, and Catherine couldn't be busier. But she was kind enough to take a break from her day to try a Greensboro institution. Yum yum. Amazing. Talk to me about this place. I mean, there's a lot going on leading up to November 3rd. You know, it is a swingy swing state. Um, I think a lot of people have said that North Carolina is a red state. And I don't think that that's true. Especially we've seen in 2018 that that wasn't true. But I think that there's still the opportunity for Republicans to win North Carolina. Do you worry that the state could actually flip this year? I mean, I'm definitely worried about it, but I'm trying to do everything that I can to make sure that that doesn't happen. It was absolutely delicious. See, this is why I got the cup. I knew what I was doing. I'm not making a mess eating ice cream. Am I really eating ice cream? Let's show them who we are. And it's no secret that the candidates are noticing the energy coming from young people this year. Here's how you can spot a zombie. Both Trump, someone who has a corpse-like appearance. He absolutely has an issue with the truth. And Biden appealing to the youth vote with goofy ads and memes across social media and YouTube. 
no matter what side of the aisle you sit on, or if you don't sit in one at all, whether you've done it before, or if it's your first time, this November 3rd, the choice is ours. What issues are most important to you in this year's election? I want to see how our presidents handle the race relations currently in this country and the seriousness of this pandemic. It's not even a matter of, do you want Biden or do you want Trump? It's a matter of, do you want socialism or do you want a free society? And I feel like there's a lot of people who feel like me. You think now, in 2020, in the middle of a racial reckoning with this country, in the middle of a pandemic in this country, that it's cool to actually vote? Yes, I believe it's actually been cool to vote. Do you think your vote matters? Yes. Why? My vote matters. It has the power to sway elections, and it also has the power to influence a bunch of other people to make their voices heard. I can post about it. I can dance while I'm doing it. I can tell the world that I'm doing it. <laughs> Look at me. I'm voting. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.